Welcome to another episode of One on One with Ms. LaFawn. Joining me this week, former Accept frontman and current UDO frontman Udo Dirkschneider. He's got a new album called Navy Metal Night, where he was accompanied by the German Navy Orchestra for some of his biggest hits. Uh, he also released Decadent earlier this year, so two albums for Udo this year. And of course, he has got the 2016 Farewell to Accept tour that he's doing. He's not, of course, with the band, except he will be out uh, with his own band under the name of Dirk Schneider, playing all the Accept songs, and he promises that this will be the last time that he will sing them. So we talked to him about that. On the second half of the episode, we have a new band uh, out of uh, the States called Hudson, and we speak to the front man, David and Chris, the uh, guitarist, and we talk about their new Cast Out EP. Uh, but first, without further ado, the one, the only, Udo of UDO. Here he is. Udo Dirk Schneider from the band Udo. The new album is Navy Metal Night. Uh, good day, Udo. How are you? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Everything is fine. So, just came back uh, from uh, a festival in Germany. So, just have a couple of days off, and then we start a Russian tour, an Ukraine tour. Wow, wow a Russian and Ukraine tour. That, that'll, yes. be, uh, that'll be interesting, <laughs> uh, considering everything that's going on in, in between those two countries these days. Yeah, but, you know, we don't have anything to do with any political thing. We are of there to, to rock and roll. Make Walk and roll and in, uh, give the people a good time. That's it, you know. There, so it is, for us, it's, it's, it's easy. Uh, there will be no problems for us. And then uh, I don't, also, I told already all the promoters in Russia and, and Ukraine, I don't want to answer any political questions. Yeah, which which is reasonable because it's, yeah. not, it's not your place. I mean, it's, no, it's, it's no. you're there, yeah, you're there uh, to play music. So, so it, let's, let's it, talk music. Yeah, let's talk about music. Here we go. Uh, you've put out two albums this year. You had a new studio album, Decadent, earlier in January, and now you've got Navy Metal Night. Uh, let's yes. start with that one. That one was a unique experience for you because you had the German Navy Orchestra, the, which I'll try to pronounce the Marine Music Corps Nord Sea. Is that is that yes. about right? That's, that's, cor that's correct. I, I do that's my correct. best. Uh, yeah, talk to me about how that show came to be. I mean, it, it is somewhat different than just sort of it, plugging in and playing, right? Yeah, it, it definitely is completely different. I mean, the the, the idea to do something um, in a, in a way a classic stuff is already like I mean, when Stephen Kaufman still was in the band already fifteen years ago. So, but then we tried, you know, with a, with a couple of symphony orchestras uh, to do something. But, you know, that was always like with, with cello and violins and all that stuff. That was like more for ballads and, and really uh, um, uh, uh, slow songs. So, but that, that was always like, nah, this is not the right thing, you know. And then uh, in, in the meanwhile, we said, okay, don't for, then forget it. it, it we don't want to do stuff like that, you know. So many bands did this already. And then for... for yeah, uh, when I was mixing the album, Steel Hammer album uh, with the guy, um, uh, 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 Martin Pfeiffer, um, he is, is uh, one of the members of this uh, music uh, Marine Corps. And um, so, and then he has a show in a church. So, and then we said, okay. Before we get bored in the studio, uh, watch this, you know. I didn't, uh, let's see. What they're playing, how the sound is. So and then I was sitting in a church, and then they were playing our stuff, Michael Jackson stuff, really modern stuff. I, I, I was expecting more Christmas songs and marching stuff. <laughs> right. So, but uh, but the sound only with brass, you know, uh, that was like I said, that's it, that's it, that fits together with uh, with, with, with with metal, you know, that makes. It, more harder so and then yeah and then we start talking to each other also with uh, 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 with the with the main guy of the orchestra and uh, and he said ah with heavy metal boo i don't know mm -hmm, we will see so and then we did some demo stuff with the computer 
arranging wise and then yeah then they said wow yeah the sound is very very good so and then yeah it was step by step and it took nearly one year to make it happen uh, to bring the, the the whole thing on stage and uh, yeah and i think the result um i'm i'm really happy with this you know it's yeah. not it's not uh, uh it, it's still metal you know and this is that i don't know i mean maybe maybe i have uh, that, that the sound is uh, yeah different than to uh, what what maybe for example Metallica did or Scorpion or whatever, and this is real heavy. So, what can I say? I mean, uh, I think we did the right thing. Yeah, I really think so too. It, it sounds fantastic. Now, is that something that you might want to put on the road and, and somehow figure out a tour with a brass section? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, this is not so easy with the military orchestra. <laughs> no, but maybe oh, get another configuration, hire four or five guys or hire. I mean, is there... Oh, no, 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 no. But, but, but we are doing, if we did another show in Wacken uh, this year, with uh, but with a different uh, military orchestra. So the, the Navy was uh, split up completely. And um, so, but it was also a yeah, fantastic show with this uh, with these guys. Uh, in in back in Wacken. so but now we are talking about maybe doing a couple of shows, you know, on special festivals, stuff like that, and um, but not a real tour. I don't want a real tour with this. No, no, no. Fair enough. Um, another thing that that's exciting about this album is that you've had well, maybe not this album, but the band now is that you've had your son Sven join the band. Uh, mm -hmm. How is that having your son in there? Does it change the dynamic a bit? I mean, I know with bandmates, sometimes you'll say, "Well, play it this way or do it that way." Um, with your son there, does it does it change that? Where you you say, "Well, okay, son, uh, play whatever you want." I mean, a, any kind of effect there? No, nope. I mean, of course, he 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 plays some uh, stuff different than Francesco Jovino did it, but he is. Um... He fits perfectly in, in in a band, you know. But, but I was I was not uh, he was not the guy in the first place when when uh, Francesco left the band. <clears throat> um, but uh, then I saw him with with Texan, you know. He was replacing Nigel on the drums for five shows. Yep. And then I, then I, then I said, why not taking him? Take him, you know. He was doing all, already when I did the twenty fifth anniversary. Uh, in Wacken, in my birthday in, in Wacken, he was playing four for UDO songs uh, on drums already, and he did a great job. He was come sometimes on stage when he was uh, in Germany on tour. He played uh, "I'm a Rebel," "Faster to Shark," stuff like that, you know. So, um, yeah. So, and then I asked him, and then he he didn't say directly yes, but um, it takes two weeks before he called me and said, "Okay, I do it." And then I said, why you take that that long? Yeah, he thought, hmm, it's not so easy, you know. I was thinking I can I can do the job in in a perfect way, you know. So, and then, yeah, what, what can I say? Everybody's happy in a band. And, um, yeah, we're becoming more and more a boy group. <laughs> exactly. You're getting younger and younger. Now, he, he's going to stay with the band. He's not just replacing temporarily. He is a band member. No, yeah, he's a band member now, definitely, yeah. Yeah, that, well, that, that's got to be exciting. Uh, maybe someday my son will interview people with me. Who knows? Yeah, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Uh, the song Dancing with an Angel on yes. uh, the new album features Doro Pesh. Uh, you and Doro have a long history. You've, you've, you've been on each other's albums before or shows. Yeah. Yes. Um, she's a very special lady. I, I mean, I've talked to her many times, and I, I just love her. She, she is talking about an angel. There is one for you. Um, tell me about your relationship with Dora. Where did it start, and, and what does she mean to you? Uh, I mean, it starts uh, already when she was not in Warlock, <laughs> so long, long time long ago, time you ago, know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, and, and always, I mean, yeah, we we met each other. We were talking about music, and I think you know, for a woman to be in this business for that long, I mean. I can only say chapeau, you know. She's doing very well. She is singing, singing very well, and she is, yeah, uh, for me one of the in Germany, the one, the queen of metal, you know, in Germany, definitely. 
Oh, she's definitely the queen of metal. And oh yeah, uh, it, it's interesting that you meant in Germany because there there really is these bands that achieve great success in one country and not in others. In the states and Canada, it's harder for for her to come over here, but over there, plays arenas. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, in 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 Europe, she she plays everywhere. She goes to South America. I mean, it's just, it's also I mean. Not in the Eastern countries. This is not so popular. But, uh, I mean, it's the same for us, you know, for UDO to yep. come to the States. Uh, I tell you, this is, we, it's no problem to, to we have enough offers to come over or to, to Canada. But, uh, you know, let be, be really honest. Uh, 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 the money, what they offer, it's impossible to do this tour in, 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 in the States or in Canada, you know. I mean, this is now, so the days are over that the record company gives you support money, you know, this is uh, over. So, and I don't want to pay to be be on tour in America or Canada. I mean, also, this days also are over. Yeah, it really is. In fact, there, there's a festival in Montreal called Heavy Montreal, which I think you would be perfect for. I mean, it, yeah. you know, about 40,000 people. Yeah. It's not a whole yeah. tour. You'd, you'd get to the, the... I'd love to see you on it. Uh Speaking of uh, touring on albums and stuff, the last album was Decadent, which which came out uh, yes. in, in the first quarter. Yeah. Um, you know, with the release of the new uh, live album, is the cycle for Decadent over and you're starting to think about a new album at this point? Or is this sort of a, a bonus release? No, we are still on the Decadent tour. Okay. So now we do Russia, we do Ukraine, right, then right. we go to South America. And then uh, next year we do, let's say, a break for UDO. Then it's called Dirk Schneider. Right. And then we go on tour. Yeah, I do it for the last time, um, except songs. Yeah, well, I wanted to get only, to that. Yeah. So and then that uh, will be goes until as far as I know. So September, October next year. And you know, I mean, there's also a lot of people ask me why you do this. I mean, I said. Um, uh, always the people asking, oh, you can play this except song and this except song and this except song. I mean, you know, I mean, I have 15 UDO albums uh, out and um, uh, for me now UDO is UDO and um, of course I know that the people like to hear except songs with my voice, you know, but uh, I want to close something, you know, I want to close like a book and say, okay, that's it, I read it and Sometimes you have to come to an end with something, you know. I want right. to close up everything with Accept. And that will be the last time. And I said, okay, I do one more tour. That will be a world tour. Hopefully we can do this also with in, for America. I don't know, maybe a couple of shows. And um, yeah, and that will be the last time that you, yeah, when we are on tour with UDO, we never play any Accept songs again then. Well, is that, because, you know, listen, those songs have been a part of your life for oh, yeah. 35 years, 40 years. The first time I saw you was with Kiss at the Montreal Forum, which I guess was... Oh, <laughs> in 84 or something like that. Yeah, Jan yeah, January yeah. of 1984 on, on the Lick It Up tour, and, you know, you were doing balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is it going to be difficult to let go of those songs? Because, again, 35 years of balls to the wall, you're the balls to the walls guy. Um, yeah. Right? <laughs> It is something to 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 just turn away from. Yeah, but you know, I I also want to stop also to be compared with now, but except it's still on tour, you know, they right. are existing and they have a new singer and yep. they're doing also balls and they're doing also metal heart. They do princess, and I don't want to be always, you know, compared and have to say what you think about this and this and this. This is also another reason, you know. I want to close the except chapter. And thank you. I mean, it was a great. I mean, in a way, it wasn't. I I was creating this band, you know, and um, so. But sometimes you have to say, okay, that's it. And I mean, uh, I have enough UDO songs, and uh, so I can play more UDO songs and be UDO. I mean, uh, I think I can say without being arrogant udo is uh had his own fan base you know now uh, oh, absolutely and it's a great band yeah so and um sometimes you have to say okay that's it 
You do, you do, but but it, there, there's got to be a, a small part of you that's going to see be sad seeing those go. Why do you think that those songs have endured for thirty years? Because a lot of bands released albums in 1983 that nobody cares about today, and yet here you are, all these years later, and people still say, "Please sing it." What, what was yeah. so special? I don't know, but it's it's special. You never can tell it really. You know, if you do make it like smoke on the water, it's, 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 in a way, something like this. You know. It's it's um, yeah. Sometimes it's a song, and it in a way it stays forever, you know. But but as, as long, let's say it in this way, as long, there is a band called Accept. And please, if you want to hear these songs, please go then to Accept. <laughs> so that's the only thing I can say. I mean, uh, now you have the chance next year to hear it with the original voice. But Mark is doing a. I would say a good, really good job on it. Yeah. So please go there and uh, listen, listen then to accept and UDO. It's then UDO. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and I think fans are going to enjoy the fact that you're you're doing that. It's it's a good farewell to the. To, it is to in your... a way. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just back to decadent for a second. What at this point? Because you mentioned you had thirteen, fourteen albums. There's a lot of material. What yes. keeps you making new material? Because you could really, I mean, let's be honest, you could go to a bar, they could put your name on the marquee, and the same amount of fans are going to show up because they want to see what you do. You don't need to make new music. We both know that. You can, you can live on the past. So of course, what? I can. Yeah, course. you're right. I can do that. But this is, uh, no, you want to create, especially now with the new two guitar players, you know, Um uh, now there was the first time that they was uh, working together and composing together on on the decadent album uh, on the steel hammer album was it was only Andre was playing the songs but I was writing the songs together with the bass player and uh, but now the whole band is writing songs you know and it, it makes it interesting to see what's coming up to something new but of course then you play always on the new tour three or four or five songs. And then you, of course, you have to play songs from Animal House. So play have to play from this album, this album, this album. Uh, yeah, it, it keeps you going. Or you, that that you want to make create some new stuff. Of course, that's uh, also another thing. Of course, I can say, oh, another album. No, come on, let's go on tour again without a new album. But sure. you're right. But uh, no, this, um, no, no. It's it's always good to see. You know, when you when you put a new album out. And you go on tour and play, let's say, four, five, six songs of a new album. You you want to see the reaction of the people. Are you? Is that was that good enough? Was that the right direction? No, that keeps you going the whole thing. Otherwise, it can be bored. <laughs> you get bored. Uh, just, yeah, so, but no, it, but I mean, it is difficult to get fans to listen to new a new album in the back like you said in the old days you had a record company behind you that provided tour support that provided mm -hmm. support at radio that mm -hmm. pushed it and now you make an album you throw it out there and we don't know who where what finds it there's no record stores anymore there, there's you know there's um yeah it's a bit but, of a challenge but you have facebook you have uh, right. youtube uh, you have uh, now uh, your own home page I mean, you can do a lot of things now with this media, you know. I mean, uh, it's different than to the old days. I mean, of, of course, uh, selling CDs is not that much as it was in, in the 80s. This is a fact, you know. I mean, uh, if you, especially for new bands and they put out an album, uh, it, it's very hard for them to make a living of it, you know. I mean, in a way, we are lucky, the old bands, uh, we are still we're having a huge back catalog. And uh, we can tour worldwide. I mean, we can make a, a living of it. For new bands or young bands, it's very hard to survive in this business. You know, record companies, they don't give any support if you're not selling enough with the one or two first two albums. Okay, next band. Uh, this is uh, no money anymore uh, in, uh, at the record companies. That the, the business is changing. Oh, it really is. Now, now, you mentioned Facebook and the social media. How yeah. how involved are you with the social media? When, when there's a tweet that comes out from, you know, the the UDO, UDO account or the Facebook, 
Do you mm-hmm. have any say? Are you doing it yourself or is it sort of a team that does it for you? Mm, at the moment, see also the young people, my son, <laughs> he's he's doing a lot of things with Facebook together with our keyboard player. Now I have also a keyboard player. And uh, so these two guys are really, really doing at the moment the Facebook and all that stuff, you know. And then we have another guy for our uh, uh, website. So we give them all information and they, uh, they, they, they work with all that stuff. I'm too old for this. So <laughs> Right, right, right. So um, your, uh, your guitarist of, of old was Stephen Kaufman. He left the band in, yes, two, in yes. 2012 for, yes. for health reasons. Have, yeah. you, have you spoken to him recently? And, and if so, how is he doing? Oh yeah, I mean, of course we don't have any bad vibes going on. No, no, I mean, I, and I didn't suggest that. I, I but no, I, no, no. We're talking to each other. I mean, he's now uh, in a way happy about what he's doing, but he is not uh, producing bands. He did just, I think, one or two bands, but he's more now into video stuff, you know, video clips, uh, cutting stuff like that, and uh, making some uh, uh, commercial for for some companies and making. It's in sound uh, underneath and all that stuff. No, he's he's really happy, and I think it was um, uh, for him the best thing to do. I mean, on stage he couldn't walk; he has so much pain with it with his back, you know. Right. And uh, it was a nightmare to see. He was taking pills you kill, can kill an earth and with this, you know. And uh, I think. I think he's really happy what he's doing at the moment. And of course, sometimes you have to come also soon uh, to an end, you know, so, uh, let's say uh, with, with composing wise with, 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 with Stefan Kaufmann. I mean, we did, I think we, we, we both together, we did great stuff for UDO. He's a really good composer, great. but sometimes, you know, we call it the battery is empty. So I was asking him when we, when we, it up and I said, okay, now I want to do a new a new album with a new guitar player and so. And I said, hey, yeah, interesting still to write songs and and he said to me, no, the battery is empty at the moment, completely empty. And also, I don't want to produce the next album. Uh, I think it was the right, how do you say, it, the right moment for him, you know, to say, okay, also stop something. And he always always was already talking. Uh, yeah, maybe I want to do more stuff with video, blah, blah, blah. So, and he found his, his direction, I think. And maybe, you know, you never know, maybe he some, someday is coming up with one, two or three songs and then, hey, you want to have them or you like the songs? I mean, you never know. But um, at the moment, um, I hear nothing uh, about this, uh, that he's coming up with something. But at least health-wise, he's fine. He's, he's, yeah. He's, okay. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, so. You mentioned no that everything comes to an end. At some point, do, do you think about retirement or do you just do like, you know, Mick Jagger and B.B. And King and, <laughs> and just keep going and going and going? Or, or do you say, listen, my knees hurt, my back hurts, my voice, my, whatever the excuse is. Do you see a day where you'll, you'll hang it up? No, I mean, uh, I just keep going. And for me, it's always important as long as my voice is working. <clears throat> as long which as it I is, can. which it yeah, is, it sounds it great. Works, on yeah, so I'm, I think I'm really lucky. And um, uh, the most important thing for me is uh, I still have fun to do this. You know, I still have fun to be on tour. I have a, a really good, uh, 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 how you say, the chemistry going on in, in the band. You know, it's yep. a lot of fun with these young guys. They push me also. There's fresh blood in the band. So, and we will see, I don't know, maybe I can do it for, if nothing happened, health, health, uh, with, with my health or something like that. I mean, 20 I mean, years maybe, or so. I don't know, 10 let's years, hope. I don't know, we will see. Well, well let, let's hope for as long as possible. Um, yeah. Now, we were, given, know, we were given 20 minutes, so I, I'm going to respect that, but I just want to ask one last question. Yeah, no uh, problem. We talked about the, the sort of quote-unquote accept farewell tour under the name of Dirk Schneider. Will yes. anything come of it in terms of a, a DVD, a live album, a, any kind of uh, memento for the fans to hold on to I, after it's said and done? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, normally record companies, they come or come always up and say, oh, you put out so many stuff, you know, we have to stop that. But with this, I think 
definitely I can say there will be a live CD out. Definitely. Oh, good. I mean, you have to do this. I mean, this will be, it's only one more time. This is, uh, yeah, you never, it never will, it will be happened again, you know, like this. So, and I think you have to put this on, on, on a CD. Well, I, I agree. In fact, I would go as far as saying that it would be silly if you didn't. I mean, you, you have yeah. to, you have to uh, document yeah. this uh, somehow. Yes. And, and I that's think, the, go ahead. Yeah, that, uh, that, that was very interesting. The record company came up with this, you know, they said we have to do this. Said, yes, I know. <laughs> well, because the fans also are saying, I, I want to. I think because, so. Yeah, because yeah. you're not going to hit every city in the world, and there are fans oh. that are not going to be able to come to a show, and they'll want to hear this. And yes. it, uh, it would make sense. Um, yeah. That said, absolute pleasure speaking. It's always, always fun. Um, I wish you the best, and I certainly hope that uh, uh, you end up at the Heavy Montreal Festival in 2016. I think you would be a perfect addition to that. That would festival. be great. And we will do our best. Yes. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye okay. now. Bye-bye. 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 And there you have it, folks. My interview with Udo of the band UDO. The new album is Navy Metal Knights. Very much looking forward to the Udo or the Dirk Schneider Does Accept Farewell Tour. Hopefully that'll come to Montreal, more specifically Heavy Montreal. Fingers crossed on that. Let's move over to Chris and David of the band Hudson. You can check them out at HudsonTheBand.com. The new EP is called Cast Out. Here they are, David and Chris. We are speaking with David Hudson and Chris Llewellyn of the band Hudson. Uh, good day, guys. Good day. How are you, man? How Thank you, you for having us, too. Thanks yeah, for having us. Absolutely. It's, it's always exciting to... Uh, you know, discover new rock. You can't always uh, be interviewing the uh, the older generation of bands, right? Yeah, definitely. So now we're we're going to be talking about the second EP called Cast Out. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about the first one called Into the Unknown. Um, why don't we just go with that first? Why not uh, take the songs from both EPs and just make an album? Why go the EP route? Um, you know, it's in this day and age, we're, we're just trying to keep, um, people interested in what we're doing. And, um, it was easier, easiest for us to just do a five song EP and get that out, uh, in the beginning on the first one and, and then keep the train moving. And now we got to our second EP, um, a lot of work and time goes into these records. Um, we put you know, sometimes this record will come together real quick, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes when we write it, but then we'll spend, you know, a month uh, on the recording of it, getting it to sound where we want it to be. Um, so because of that, it's easier to put out a five song record, you know? Yeah. Is, is there a consistency between the two? Because the other one came out almost a year ago now at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah, over a year, over a year, over a year ago. ago, right? So, uh, is it really two? Does it capture two moments in the band's history, or is it we did five songs, we had five left over, and we'll put them out later? Oh no, it's definitely uh, an evolution. Every project we do, um, we're constantly writing, and um, you know, some songs might get saved for for later records or whatnot, but uh, we we. Uh, this the sound on this one has definitely evolved from the last EP. And I think another reason for, um, you know, just doing the EPs for now is because we're still kind of building our momentum. We're still uh, getting the, the sound out to our audience and uh, establishing a, a group of uh, supporters. So um, that's kind of the reason we don't, we don't want to give it all away at once because when we do release the debut album, it's going to be, um, it's going to be everything uh, encompassed into one. Right, which is fair enough. So talk to me a little bit about building a following in this day and age. Uh, is it really just the concert circuit that does it? Can, or is it the whole social media stuff by working the Facebook and the YouTube and, 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 I, and uh, not iTunes, but Twitter? Um, how do you build a following? Uh <laughs> 
You know, that's a bit of a that's a bit of a question we're still trying to answer ourselves. I don't think I don't think social media is we don't think social media is the necessarily best route to do it. Uh, we still, you know, we're we're a band that believes in uh, natural interaction, and um, we still think that um, you know the best way to get people on board and get people hooked is to see you live and to hear you live. And then even furthermore, I mean, to have like an actual conversation face to face, um, because we just believe that, you know, human to human interaction is, is, is the best. And, um, you know, it's, it's the been, been the way that we've done it since day one, um, on since time on earth. So we kind of think that's just like kind of the, the, the best way to do it. Social media, they, they have, there's perks about that. Um, but, um, we've seen through our research and through doing social media for years now that it doesn't, you know, really keep people and, um, unless, you know, unless they get to see that live experience, it, that's what really we believe is a scene that has kept people along with us. Yeah, I agree with that. So, so talk to me about then the live show. What do you do in a live show that'll keep the fans coming back? I mean, is it, is, is it sort of a you know, uh, bombs and, 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 and fire or what really is the, the attraction with your live show? We, um, we put our heart and souls on the stage. Um, our, our live show is really over the top and energetic. And, you know, every time you come out, whether it's a packed house or three people in the, in the crowd, we're going to, put our hearts and souls in the performance 100 percent um so that's you know that's what's great about our live show yeah we play we play multiple instruments um you know uh chris here he plays uh he plays a double neck guitar on one song while also playing the harmonica um brian our bassist will also be playing the keyboard at the same time he's playing the bass um, we even have a drummer that plays the harp and he'll also double up and play the, the harp with the uh, right hand and the, and the drums and the left in, in some scenarios. Um, so it's, it's pretty exciting in that sense of uh, instrumentation, but I mean, it's a wild good time. And like, we, we never have come off stage dry simply to put it. Um, we're, we're soaking wet and sweat because everyone's moving, everyone's grooving, everyone's, you know, dancing or going crazy wild and um, it's like it's like Chris says. There's just no restrictions. There's no boundaries when we're on stage. We reveal ourselves in our authentic, raw form, and we do it in a very lively, uh, interactive manner. So I also myself, while I'm singing, you know, sometimes I'll I'll, I'll get in the mode of um, feeling a little bit crazy. I'll do a backflip off the drum set. So. <laughs> It's it's not boring, um, and and furthermore, you know, we're not just a band that's about putting on a live performance that's fun and interactive and, and loud. We're a band that's about you know pushing forward a message um, of promoting people um, while also maintaining the reality of life and the struggle that they're in. So um, I think you know you see all of those things encompassed in one, and when you do, going back to the last question, it kind of it kind of keeps you intrigued. Yeah, it's funny that you say uh, more harp. I, I thought the uh, the drummer was supposed to provide more cowbell, not uh, not harp, <laughs> right? He does. When we ask for it, he does provide that. that does <laughs> Which is important. Uh, you know, looking at the influences of the band, right? It's 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 it says that you're it's it's Led Zeppelin, it's Leonard Skinner, it's Johnny Cash. Uh, what attracted you to those bands? Uh, the heart and soul and passion, really. Um, and, you know, the attitude and rawness and soulfulness, you know. Rock and roll is all about attitude, and we feel that's what's been missing from uh, the rock these days. So, And all those guys are very authentic, man. Like, all those guys are just true to who they were, true to who they were, like, on stage and in the music and None of them um, ever really allowed anybody else to take who they are and mess with it. Um, they always kept control creatively and uh, portrayed themselves 
as the true person that they were so uh, that they are and so um that's what we're kind of all about you know we don't we don't um we're not really into anybody else coming in and, and manipulating the music or our image we want to uh be honest and authentic with the world and that being said you know we're fully self produced you know all the content that you see comes straight from us um we have a small team of people who we work with um to get what we need done. You know, we have an amazing director we work with on our video stuff, an amazing graphic designer who does all that stuff for us. Um, but, you know, we even do a lot of the graphic design ourselves. Um, everything's fully self-produced by myself, Chris, as well as Brian, who's the keyboard and bass player. Um, and, you know, we're fully self-internal and not signed to a label, pretty much acting as our own label. Yeah, Chris and Brian do all of the all of the music, all of the production, and um, I write all the lyrics. We fund everything ourselves. We run the business ourselves, and we have people that help with certain aspects in the area. And of course, our manager Jaren is fantastic. But uh, but yeah, we're we're nothing goes out the door without our approval. Yeah, which is which is nice to have creative control. Uh, let me just ask you also about. Um, you know, just rock in general. It's been said by by some that rock is dead. Is this sort of a band that's out there for the money, or 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 how do you keep it moving forward with rock and roll? Why not just do pop or rap or something that's more, uh, you know, mainstream these days? Uh, I can answer that one for you. Uh. I was doing pop records for the last 10 years as a producer with Brian as well. And, you know, we just got fed up with uh, not being able to be in control creatively. And, you know, the manufactured side of the business is very manufactured and not authentic, in our opinion. Um, and uh, a lot of it just takes the fun out of music. It's not why we got into it, you know. Um, so no, it's not about the money. I mean, we all obviously have to live and eat and make a living from this. So, you know, when it gets to that point, that would be, I mean, you know, once we get it to that point where it's really moving full steam ahead, then that'll be awesome. But for us, it's about the the love for what we do. And that's why we do this. Yeah. And you yeah, talk, and it's, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say this. It's it's always funny because like you look back through the through the decades, um, and as soon as people start saying rock and roll is dead, it somehow revives itself and it comes back, um, and like with Nirvana and um, and it's just like um, I I don't know man I think people are getting to that point where um, you know they've seen enough pop they've seen enough of the synthetic side of things and they're kind of coming back into the holistic desire of you know just what's real again and you can even look and you know Meryl Streep just in, in film and television Meryl Streep just did that uh movie about the uh rock and roll starlet and um David uh Leary's got that uh FX show sex drugs rock and roll so you can see in the media not even in, maybe in the music realm so much but you can see in the media how they're they're uh catching on like oh rock and roll is kind of coming back and people want that kind of raw sound again so I think it's it's on the verge of uh of just about to uh launch forward. That's what we uh that's what we plan on uh helping to do as well. Yeah, and, and as far as rock and roll's dead, I don't buy it personally myself. Perhaps it is this generation's jazz, but it'll never disappear, right? It's it's always going to be there. Now right. you, you talked about being self-contained, uh, the production, the putting out of the albums. Uh, is it important these days to have a, a record label behind you or can you make it just as well doing it all on your own? Um, well, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis on the pop side of things prove that you don't need a record label. So we're kind of taking that same approach. Um, you know, if a label came along at some point and um, said, here are the keys of the castle, we just want you guys to do what you want to do, then you know, obviously we talk about that at that point, but for now we're just moving on full steam ahead with what we want to do. Okay, but if uh, if they came to you and said, well, we're not giving you the keys to the castle, uh, we're going to let you in, but we're going to tell you where you're going to put the bed and where we're going to put the furniture and sort of start telling you how to do that, would you accept that? Or 
is control more important to you at this point? Absolutely not. We already know the game and how, you know, uh, how they market bands and will change your whole image and change your whole thing. And we've spent the last three years now, or, you know, two and a half, three years getting this thing to where it is. And we're not willing to sacrifice. Control is always going to be important at any point uh, for this band because of the message we're trying to send and of, because of the authenticity we're trying to always portray. And when you have a label come in or executive powers come in and say, well, do this and do that, say this and say that, and it's not 100% you, then really you lose you lose who you are. You lose um, the, uh, the dynamic in your message, the dynamic in your music, and that's never going to be worth it for us because, right. I mean, we'll sleep on the floor for the rest of our lives if we have to. Right. to make this you lose that integrity, out. too. And that's when, it, that's when it stops becoming art. Yeah, and we're, we're trying to make art here. We're not, we're not trying to be a band that puts out records that gets rich and famous. Like, trust me, there's already some major shortcuts we could have taken. At this point, years ago, we could have already taken these shortcuts, and we just refuse, and we work 10 times harder, and we sacrifice 10 times more, because we know in the long run, we're about longevity, man. We want the long run and the big picture to be what this band is, not just, you know, a couple hit songs for a couple years and then kind of fade off. We want to do this for life, and we want to make art for life and convey a message for life. Yeah, I certainly hope so. Uh, you mentioned art, and and which brings me back to the EPs. Is the album a full-length album, ten songs, twelve songs? Is that a lost art? I mean, is it still relevant in today's marketplace? I mean, I, I think it is relevant. You see Adele, and she sold thirty million copies. You know, it's like, did you put your heart and soul into the project? And you know, on the pop side of the business, every time I reference that, people are like, well, that's Adele. And I'm like, no, that's an artist who put her heart and soul into well, her project. I wouldn't even say uh, it's Adele. I mean, I would say she probably sold a 30 million on the strength of that one single or maybe the two singles. Uh, it's, it's hard to sort of say, did she sell the 12 songs or did they just buy 30 million copies of that one really, really big song? It, it's hard to know. No, because if, if it was the one or two songs, we have already the ability and we had the ability at that time to just buy the one or two songs on iTunes. And people do that all day, every day. They just buy the one or two songs and preview the rest of them. That's how our generation and the generation before us works. And people, you know, everybody on earth now is starting to catch on to the fact that, you know, you don't have to buy the whole album, to save some money. But the reason again, that they bought the whole album is because they, connected with her so deeply and they saw her pain and understood her pain that they said i support this in in the whole album kind of way so i think to us that's and that's what art is is you know it's portraying a really true authentic message that people can relate to and that's what she did so i think that's why she sold i think that's why we think she sold you know 30 mil right um and let's let's finish on that. Uh, you, you you mentioned that there might be a full length EP or a full length album, I should say, coming down the road. Uh, any game plan on that? Do you know if it's going to be in six months, in a year, or sort of just it'll be when it'll be? It's just going to be when it's going to be. You know, we're obviously, you know, most likely trying to drop some kind of EP or album every year and stay on the road at the same time, which we'll be able to do because we're self-produced, so we can produce out on the road and do the records on the road. Um, but if we do a full-length debut album, we're going to want some type of major distribution behind us, so that's what we're working towards at this point. Right. And, and then I will finish with this question. Um, what is the game plan in terms of, seeing how long it takes for this to, to succeed. Is is there a five-year plan? And if it doesn't work out, you think of something else? Or is it, we'll just keep going until it actually does work out? Yeah, we put a, we've all, all four of us have put our lives into this. And um, like, no matter how long it takes, we're going to make it happen. But right. at the same time, we also have a lot of confidence in uh, what's already starting to build at this point. And um, so we... Uh, we're just all about getting on the road and getting in front of people and, um, you know, letting their eyes and ears make the call. And, um, you know, we, we have confidence that within the next couple of years, there's going to be some things that take place that, 
um, really help move the momentum and push us to the forefront. Um, and if you, you know, and it's all about timing as well. You know, we we did time this band out. You know, the band's coming around this time because we knew when the culture would shift away from pop music and move towards more organic stuff, which it started doing with Mumford and Sons and Adele. And then you get bands like Imagine Dragons bring the more black keys and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, that's where we're at as far as it's, it's, it's ripe. It's ripe right now. That's all. Yeah. You know, we were at Coachella this past year and, the, or the year before was all electronic. This year is ACDC and Jack White, you know. So that's where that's where the culture is shifting to, we feel. Yeah, you can't kill a classic, that's for sure. Uh, just based on, on the music I've heard on In the Unknown and Cast Out, uh, the band's got a bright future. Uh, so that, that I think, is a great thing. Um, guys, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Time. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you having us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's always nice to uh, to help you know promote new bands. We we love the classics. We love the the, the Zeppelins and the Skinners and the you know the Johnny Cash and all that. But uh, we got to talk new bands because that's that's the lifeblood. Uh, so Houston, absolute pleasure, and uh, we'll do this again. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. You have a good one. You too. And there you have it, folks, my interview with the band Hudson. Check them out at HudsonTheBand.com. The new EP is called Cast Out. It's available on iTunes. And uh, let's uh, thank Udo from the band UDO for being on the show earlier on. Uh, his new album is Navy Metal Night. Again, I'm still very much looking forward to that Dirk Schneider Does Accept Farewell Tour coming up in 2016. Uh, always a pleasure. Thank you, folks, for listening. Head over to iTunes if you like what you heard and leave a positive review that helps um, uh, raise the awareness of the podcast uh, on iTunes, and that's very much appreciated. Thank you, and as I say, bye for now.